let's shift gears here and talk about some bigger picture economic issues that, that you've commentated on. Uh, the first I want to talk about is has to do with immigration and its role on, on wages. So there's this, you know, this, I, you know, plausible sounding idea based on supply and demand econ 101, that if there's an influx of low wage workers, you know, into the U S for instance, that that's going to drive down wages for similar low skilled workers competing for those jobs in America. So why do you, why do you challenge that story? Well, I think that idea is, uh, as, uh, as you once, as you point out, it's Deacon 101, the 102 version of that is you have to remember these guys are not only workers, they're also consumers. They're also sort of workers of a particular type. They prove often what happens when you, bring in a bunch of workers who are low skill is that the domestic uh, comparable workers now go up the ladder. They, 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 you, they tend to become, because there is more labor to be used, there's, there's a demand for foremen, for example. And so they, they, they often get more managerial jobs. So this is the labor market is, you know, it's not that everybody is, is stuck in one place and there's a fixed number of jobs. When, when more people come in, partly that creates, you know, these people go to restaurants, they go to shops, they go to, uh, <coughs> they, they need, um, you know, they, they need, um, uh, whatever, uh, other sort of haircuts. So, you know, they, they create demand as well. As, as long, so I, I think that the problem with the Econ 101 idea is it thinks that it takes as, a, as given that the demand is fixed and that just the supply changes. The demand, of course, you know, people, people don't just work, they also consume. And it's it's precisely the uh, we uh, my sense of the literature is that it's precisely the fact that they consume that they diversify the labor force that's what makes the econ 101 idea fail that they they are also talent new talent they start their own businesses they hire other people they're often immigrants tend to be new immigrants tend to be the hungriest people they tend to be people who really will work you know 16 hours a day but those people are often People who set up the local bodega, hire three people to deliver to them, et cetera. And, and so it, there's a bunch of reasons why that idea doesn't work. It, it, as I said, these are all different reasons why the demand also changes, not just the supply. So there's another sort of big picture uh, issue you, you've commentated on, um, which is the, the overweighting of financial incentives um, so, so, I mean, this, this story has been for a long time, again, sort of an econ 101 story that people respond to incentives. I mean, this is like a fundamental backbone of economics is that, um, people respond to financial incentives and, you know, in, in some cases you're even modeling people as primarily responding to financial incentives or, or even only responding to financial incentives. So you you have a lot to say about this idea and and why it's wrong. Well, I think it's just prima facie. I think the evidence doesn't measure up. I mean, you you look at, um, I mean, the, you this is used in two ways. One is to say we shouldn't overpay or make life too easy for poor people. The the quote unquote income effect. If you give people, uh, if you make life too easy for them, they'll stop working. And there's actually tons of evidence on this question. And almost all the evidence goes the other way, which is that you don't see uh, a, a kind of a negative uh, whatever, income effect. People don't just become lazy. In fact, uh, in some recent work we did in Ghana, we find, which is related to the graduation program, we find the opposite, that people who get money, they sort of, they become more enthusiastic and more productive. They don't work more hours, they work the same number of hours, but those hours are more productive. And it's not so surprising, you, you know, when you're really depressed, you know, life is shit. Uh, you know, it's not clear that you would feel particularly energetic mentally and and committed to working hard it's it's not i don't find it surprising that you know when you give people 
a little cushion. Um, there's also evidence that it generate it relieves stress that people are people. There's a nice ex experiment by um, Frank Schilbach, who's one of my colleagues at MIT, and and uh, a bunch of other of my friends, and they show that basically, um, if you give people money, just not even like give them money, just pay them today rather than in a few days. So just make sure that the money is in their hands. They actually uh, become better at doing tasks. The, the stress goes away from their from them, so they they tend to they tend to relax and they tend to be more productive. They they do things better, like it's especially uh, tasks that require a lot of attention. They do better, and uh, so I and I I don't think that's Im I don't find that implausible. I think the idea that you know the you have to have a kind of a financial. Uh, democracy sword hanging on your head to make you work hard it just doesn't even seem to be psychologically plausible. I mean, I find it very stressful to be under pressure. I work best when I'm relaxed and happy. Maybe that's true of you as well. So I, I don't think it's... Then there's the other story, which is rich people uh, are going to uh, stop if you don't let them make you know, trillions of dollars, they'll stop working. And okay, there's just no evidence for it. When you look at the evidence that people use, for example, um, there was this um, famous Reagan tax cut, which is which did increase tax collection for a while. People, pe uh, people did, uh, and that was interpreted as a as a response to that. But in fact, what happened was people just took an advantage of that to bring some money that they were hiding into the tax net, and that very quickly faded away. So it's not the case that we, we just don't see very much evidence of rich people responding to incentives massively. Uh, we see some evidence that when taxes are high, they try to hide money. Uh, so we, we do see evidence of they're trying to do something about taxes, but it's not usually that. In fact, we did an interesting study in the US where we asked people it was more like a survey. But we asked people online, there were 10,000 people. We asked them, suppose uh, you, know, uh, you give people some free money, kind of universal basic income. Would people stop working? And the typical answer was very revealing. People said, I won't, but other people will. So we asked them both. Some people we asked, would you stop working? And some people we asked, would other people stop working? And I think they said, 25% said they will stop working and 50% and, but they said 50% of the others will stop, will stop working. So in other words, everybody thinks everybody else will become lazy if you, uh, if you make them kind of, re you reward them too much, uh, if you make them too comfortable. But in fact, you see the opposite. And, that's, and again, you see that also for the rich. You ask them, you know, will you stop working if, I, if, you, if taxes go up? The answer is typically, not me, but everybody else will.